What's up guys, welcome to today's vlog. So on today's vlog, I've got something special, which is a brand new scissor. So I'm gonna review that for you guys. You'll be able to purchase it on Free Salon Education uh, right away. So if you're looking for a new scissor, this could be the one. Also, I had a question, so we're gonna build this video around a question that Tiffany Mast asked on Facebook. So Tiffany says, there's so many ways to do face framing. It's all so confusing which one to do or which is better, foolproof, please teach me. So I'm gonna show you guys, it's not necessarily a foolproof way of cutting a face frame, but there's multiple ways to cut a face frame. So I'm gonna show you guys that. Also, everybody that commented below, Sarah, Julie, Cindy, all saying they have trouble with face frames. So I think this will be a great video. I think you guys will get a lot out of it. I'm gonna show you guys this scissor right now, get my thoughts. I've never held this scissor before, so. Ooh, look at this packaging. Okay, so this is the exciting part. This is the Stephen Moody series scissor from Mizutani. Let's take a look, slide it out. Ooh, look at that see-through. Now we open up the box. Okay, so here is the scissor. Okay, so here's the scissor. So a couple things that I really love about it right away. First thing is, this groove right here, that allows you when you're cutting to have your thumb in the side of the scissor and open and close that way. Let's get this off there. The other thing I love about this scissor is I love this tang. Um, it's a little shorter, so on a scissor that I would make, I would pick that as well. It also has a flat screw, which is great. Um, and it's nice and skinny. So this is a super skinny scissor. Nice, uh, it's got a nice feel to it though. It's not too light, which I like. Um, and I do like that it's kind of a darker gray look to the scissor as well. It's got a nice pointy tip. So this is definitely a scissor. It's probably gonna become one of my favorites because it's just a very simple, straightforward uh, scissor. So if you guys are looking for a new scissor to add to your collection, this is a really good one. I'm not sure the price, but it'll be on freesaloneducation.com, so click the link below. It'll take you directly to this scissor if you're looking to purchase one. Now, let's get to the fun part. We're gonna cut a face frame, so let's snap on over to the mannequin and let's get started. Okay guys, so we're gonna break this video up into two segments. The first segment's gonna be cutting a face frame using a center parting, and the second part of the video is gonna be cutting a face frame with a side parting. I also wanna go over the different uh, techniques and mechanics that are gonna go into cutting this face frame and getting a successful result. So the first thing is elevation. I showed you guys with the comb just then where 90 degrees is. Once you know where 90 degrees is, then you can find zero degrees. You don't wanna go too low when cutting a face frame with your elevation. The lower you go, the heavier the hair gets. And I think what a lot of people do is they just take the hair, they take their parting, and they uh, bring everything straight down and then cut everything based on their finger angle. You wanna really work the elevation throughout the head shape. So. The first uh, section that I took, I bring it out at zero degrees, which is straight off of the uh, forehead. Then as I work through it, my elevation goes up a little bit because I'm working back off of the head so that zero degree point changes. So you can see how nice and light that lays even though it's still a longer face frame and I didn't layer it too much. Now I take a little guideline from that previous side that we cut and that's where I'm gonna start the second part of my face frame. Now because the center parting is a symmetrical thing, as I work through each side, I'm gonna do it identical. Um, when you move into the side parting, that's when we're gonna switch it up. We're gonna cut completely different on each side. So I work my way through, uh, nothing's changing. Finger angle is parallel to the parting. So as I work through, I keep my fingers parallel, cut my line, and I just focus on that elevation as I work through the head shape. Now once I get to the end, you kind of run out of hair so you don't have to worry about that. And then I'm gonna blow it dry really fast and then go through and iron it because I wanna show you guys what that end result looks like. So I'm just gonna spray it real quick with Protect. That's part of the Paul Mitchell Neuro uh, category. So it's just gonna be a little bit of a heat protectant with a little bit of hold. And then I go through and I iron it, um, keeping the iron under 400 degrees that keeps the hair nice and healthy. You can see the face frame result that we got there. Nice and heavy, but not too heavy, and it's definitely 
easy for your guests to work with. Now we're working on a side parting. And because it's a side parting, you have a weak side and then you have a high density side. So as I work on my elevation, I want to focus on that. Also, look at how the elevation works on the head shape. You're pulling hair from all different parts of a round surface. So the very front part of the forehead, when you bring it straight out from the head, is going to be elevated differently than the back part of the hair. So you want to make sure you have enough elevation to get nice light layers throughout your face frame. So right now, I'm overdirecting everything over top of the parting. And I'm just going to keep working that way all the way over to the parietal ridge. So I just take a section. You can see right there in the overhead shot. And then I bring it over to me right over the parting. And I cut my straight line. So what this is doing, um, kind of a key thing here, is to make sure that when you go on the forehead, you don't elevate too high. Some people will go straight up from the head. And what you're doing is layering the face frame. And that doesn't sit very nice. So what this is going to do is this causing over direction from that back portion, the back part right around the crown area. So because we have that over direction, it falls backwards off of the face nice. So the next step when cutting the face frame is we've got the top done. So we worked our way over to the parietal ridge, over directing everything over the parting. I don't want to continue my way through that side because what will happen is I'll collapse that entire rest of the, from the parietal ridge down to behind the ear. Um, if I over direct that all over the parting, it's too much over direction for the head shape and it collapses it. It makes it very weak. So our goal is to make sure that we have a nice strong perimeter, even though it's a mannequin, a nice strong perimeter that goes well with the rest of uh, the layering that we've created throughout the face frame. So what I'm going to do is I cut that top section in half and I clip it away. Then I take my, a new guide and I start over directing everything up to that new guide. So straight up from the parietal ridge, basically. And what that's gonna do is just it's still gonna layer the sides, but it's not gonna be too much. It's not gonna take out too much weight and make the perimeter weak. Same finger angle, same over direction. So we're still pushing the hair off of the face, um, which is gonna give it a nice lie when the guest goes to style it. So now we've ended the right side, the heavy side. So now we're just going to go through and work the weak side. So I'll comb everything over. I'm going to take a piece for my guide and then clip the rest away. Now, I'm going to cut the weak side differently. I wouldn't um, elevate it as much as I did the heavy side because I don't want to layer it that much. The more you layer, the more density you take out. So I go through the weak side and I keep everything nice low elevation and just connect those two points. So I'm still giving it a little bit of layering, but I'm keeping the weight so it still stays strong on the one side. A lot of hairdressers will go through and they'll cut both sides exactly the same, but you have to treat them differently because they are different. So now I'm going to go through blow dry and finish uh, the style. I'm using the Paul Mitchell Neuro Iron, um, keeping it under 400 degrees so I don't create any damage. I'm also using the Neuro uh, Protect Spray, so that's a heat protectant. And now I use the Neuro Finish Spray, uh, which has a nice hold to it to finish the style. Hope you guys like this. Definitely let me know if you have any questions below in the comments. All right guys, so I hope you like this video. I hope you find the techniques that we use to cut this face frame and the thought process behind it. I hope you find that helpful in the salon as you're cutting hair. The next thing I wanna do before I finish this video, we did talk about and use the Mizutani Stephen Moody collaboration scissor uh, that is now available on freesaloneducation.com. A couple things, I had never used this before, so I don't launch anything on the website until I actually get to use it. So this scissor was a really uh, nice experience and I wanna talk about why I really like it. So a, a while back, you guys may remember, and some of you bought it, um, we came out with a limited edition FSE scissor. We based it off of the Ichinino-san number one scissor, which is one of my all-time favorite scissors because it's not super expensive, but it also um, works really well. It cuts really smooth. A lot of people like that smooth feel to a cut. I like the point of the scissor, all of that stuff. So that's why we came out with the FSE edition of the Ichinino-san. We made it gold, so on and so forth. Now, the Stephen Moody scissor, what you're gonna notice, this is a, a more expensive scissor, but there's reasons why it is. But the handles, if you look at them, are pretty much the identical. The only difference is 
His tang is a little shorter. I like that better uh, than this longer tang. It also has these little grips on the tang as well, which sit really nice when you put it in your hand. Uh, your pinky rests right on those grips. So I just feel like you have a good amount of control with the scissor. Now here's the biggest difference between this scissor and this scissor is the thickness of the blade. So you can see how skinny the Stephen Moody scissor is. Now that is definitely new technology. Um, it is nano powder metal. So like I talk about the DB20 scissor, the Z2 scissor, those are really my favorites. Those two scissors are made with the highest quality steel, nano powder metal steel, has a better grip, it has more control on the hair. So you basically took Ichinino San, which is one of the best designs of a scissor, I think, and then you souped it up. It's like putting a supercharged engine in this thing and made it this really awesome, it's just like the Pen Slim, so it's almost like the Ichi Nino San and the Pen Slim had a baby, and this is what you get. You get Stephen Moody, I guess. But that's the great thing about this scissor. I'm really in love with this thing. This is definitely one of my favorite scissors. I like the Pen Slim. I was using it a lot in the salon, but because I have this one now. I've always loved the Ichi Nino San handle, and now having it nano powder metal, having the skinny blade. It also comes in this darker matte and also a black finish. They're both in stock, so pretty awesome deal. So if any of you guys have been holding out on getting a scissor, this is the way to go. If you like this video, then make sure you hit that subscribe button below so that you're following along and you get alerts on every video uh, that we make here at Free Salon Education. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys on the next video. Thanks.